Welcome to Stadium Unplugged, the show where we get up close and personal with international sports icons to uncover the real individual behind the fame. My name is Jay Menon and today I'll be speaking to the Malaysian who changed the landscape of Asian football. In a career that has spanned more than five decades, he started at the Asian Football Confederation, AFC, in the mid-1950s before taking up a post at the Football Association of Malaysia in the 60s. A decade later, he was guiding the Malaysian national football team to the 1972 Olympics in Munich as team manager. His 30-year tenure as General Secretary with the AFC in 2002 also saw the region host the FIFA World Cup for the very first time. Currently, he devotes his time in the Special Olympics movement in the Asia-Pacific region. We are honoured to have Peter Velopan on Stadium Unplugged. Now, I have to first mention that, you know, for a man who's approaching 80, you've got two, three years to go before you reach there. I'm not going to divulge exactly what your age is. But you're looking good. You know, what are you busy with these days? In my job, Jay, I have no time to grow old. <laughs> <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> no, okay. I'm uh, right at the moment, as you know, mm -hmm. after football, I'm spending some time with the Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a movement for the intellectually disabled kids. Uh, the movement was founded by um, uh, this um, President Kennedy's uh, uh, sister, mm -hmm. uh, Schreiber, and uh, she passed away. So the son, Tim Schreiber, took over. Then he called me and said, can I help to develop the movement in Asia Pacific? So this is uh, exactly what I'm doing now. You have some friends in high places, I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about, uh, you know, when you were a child, you were uh, into lots of sports, you know. Yeah. Um, as you know, I was born in an estate. Okay. And then, uh, it's just by destiny, uh, I ended up in the Anglo-Chinese school in Sramban. Okay. And as you know, there, it was classroom mm -hmm. in the mornings and afternoons on the field, mm -hmm. you know, playing all kinds of sports. Uh, so I found myself to be uh, involving involved with uh, hockey, football and uh, sprinting. Okay. So eventually I was sprinting for Negri mm -hmm. and uh, made up the relay team as well, mm -hmm. uh, playing football and hockey for Negri Sambila. Okay, yeah. but why did you pick football, uh, you know, predominantly to concentrate on, you know, knowing that you were good at all the other sports as well? Okay, when I uh, went to England mm -hmm. for my um, uh, teacher training program, I was near the Wolverhampton Wanderers and I had the fortune of uh, meeting some of the uh, the officials and players mm -hmm. uh, so that developed uh, a lot of interest in football <clears throat> so i ended up uh, taking up coaching courses mm -hmm. for in football and then subsequently came back and went straight into football did you have any big idols growing up you know in football in other sports uh, those days actually we were not exposed to international sports I you know see. it's all uh, homegrown yeah but um, when i went to england <clears throat> then I used to admire players like Billy Wright you know, mm -hmm. and also the goalkeeper and uh, Peter Broadbent and the Wolves team. Yep. Uh, so they, they eventually uh, became the European champions at the club level and I had good relations with these uh, English uh, clubs as well. Okay. You still follow Wolves these days? You know, Wolves, the fortunes <laughs> uh, unfortunately are not, uh, yes. <laughs> not so good but, uh, but it's a very good club and uh, I like them. Yeah. Okay. Now you mentioned about growing up in Negeri Sembilan, it's a tiny state in Malaysia. What was your childhood like growing up in the estates? Well, um, I was born in 1935 mm -hmm. and uh, for the first uh, few years uh, we were actually just uh, left in the, uh, in the baby care centre because my mother has to leave at 6 o'clock to go and uh, tap rubber. Okay. And uh, so we spent a lot of time just uh, around these uh, estates. Then uh, at around 6, uh, I went to the Tamil school there for a few years. Uh, then the Japanese occupation, 45 to 50. So we learned Japanese as well at that wow. time. Wow, yeah. can you speak any Japanese still? I can now, oh, wow. uh, a communication Japanese. Oh, yeah. oh not bad. Yeah. And uh, then it was just, uh, um, as I said, a uh, destiny. I was playing football and the manager of the estate one uh, Malayali de Cruz, mm -hmm. uh, he saw my father for the first time ever coming to the field to see me play football with a cup of tea. And uh, he, de Cruz asked my father that 
if he could take me to Sramban to admit me to an English school. And of course, he had no idea what all that was about. So next morning, I got dressed up and the crews picked me up with his son. Mm -hmm. And then I was then admitted to anglo Chinese school. Okay, what position did you play? I started off as a, because of my speed, mm -hmm. they uh, played as a right winger. Then I settled down uh, as a midfield player. I see. Yeah. It started and then settled down. I like that. Yeah. You were also a teacher. Yes. What did you teach? Well, uh, when I came back from England, I was posted to ACS, same school. Mm -hmm. There, I was doing English literature, English and physical education. So, teaching classes uh, two periods a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, we used to have gymnastics and uh, track and field and uh, field games. Okay, we touched about Malaysian schools um, having such a sporting, you know, background in the years before, but now it hasn't, and you you feel passionately about this. And now that I know that you taught, uh, you know, physical education, what are your thoughts about, you know, how where it stands right now with sports uh, in schools in Malaysia? It's really very sad, you know. I first of all don't accept the current uh, education system, and secondly. Uh, there's absolutely very little sports in schools now. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, most of the teachers are not trained to teach uh, physical education or sports. Uh, most of the fields are just uh, <coughs> filled with lalangs and, uh, and all kinds of thresh. Uh, but a lot of these kids now look outside school, you know, for academies or special classes to, to learn uh, whatever they want to do which is very unfortunate because basically we say sports is a school of life. So any child who is deprived of sports really is, is, is really a very sad affair. And seeing that you're a grandfather now, so one day, you know, your, your grandchild should also be going through uh, the education system and, you know, you, mu you must be feeling strongly about that as well. I I'm sure she will have uh, the best of education, <laughs> both in the classroom <laughs> and outside. <laughs> all right, all right. More ahead on Stadium Unplugged with Peter Velopen. I think Germany and Malaysia should start the Olympic tournament in Munich. I said, are you joking? I said, you are a professional team in the Bundesliga <laughs> and we are just uh, in the amateurs.